Hey, 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 it's time to color. Who's excited? I'm totally excited. That's why I'm a couple minutes early. I think I'm all set up and ready to go. And we'll see who's here. As you pop on, if you could say hello so that I can see you, because um, it doesn't tell me who's on, it just says somebody's here. Um, and if you would like to share the video, that would be awesome as well. I'm gonna try to share the video without um, hitting the screen too much. Janice. Good morning, Deanna. How are you guys? Sorry if I'm making the screen bounce. I was inviting people. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I have going on here and um, explain to you kind of my, my process. Um, the Progressive Freebie is a digi, um, as are all of the Scrapper's Delights images. Um, in case you don't know who I am, I guess I should introduce myself. Good morning, Wendy, um, or good evening, as it were, if you're across the pond. Um, my name is Jamie Clark, and I teach uh, classes, online coloring classes, through Sweet Sentiment. Um, so I have partnered with Janice from Scrapper's Delights, and um, we are here to give you guys a free color along, because um, who doesn't love free, right? So this image is part of the progressive freebie challenge. So if you request the image out of the store, you get the image, you color it up and put it on a card, enter it into the progressive freebie challenge. As long as you continue to enter, you'll continue to get the, the images. So it's really fun. It's a great way to collect some images. And um, oh my God, look at her. Is she not like the wicked cutest image you have ever seen? So um, the paper I'm coloring on today is Sweet Sentiment Coloring Paper. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it has a little bit of shimmer to it. Um, the shimmer is within the paper itself. So it's not on top of the paper. It's not glitter that's gonna like come off on your fingers or anything like that. Um, I have a um, just a desk jet printer. So it's not a laser printer or anything like that. It's just a desk jet. And I literally just printed these images like not very long ago. So I wanted you guys to be able to see that um, it prints directly onto the paper and you can um, do you can color right away. Um, this is printed at 100%, meaning the opacity is 100%. It's, it's black. Um, the lines are black, black, true, rich black. Um, and I have sized her so that she would fit on an A2 size of paper. This is A2. So essentially it's a quarter sheet of paper. Um, you guys are being so quiet. Stop being so quiet. Um, and then the great thing about digital images is you can flip them. You can resize them. You can make them bigger or smaller or change the opacity. So, um, like I said, this one is at 100%, so that means it is black lines. This is at 50%, so you see the lines are gray, they're half as black. This is at 30%, um, so this is kind of how, hey Terry, so this is kind of how you can train yourself to color in the no lines. You start with 100%, move to 50, move to 30, then you can start baby stepping down. I made this girl nice and big um, because, oh, I'm sorry, she's 30. And she's 20. So 100 is black, 50, 30, 20. Um, so you can, you know, like I said, you can flip flop the images, you can resize the image, anything like that. So um, that's just kind of a quick tutorial on the whole, um, you know, digital image kind of scenario. I have chosen to um, print her fairly large so that you guys can see detail when I'm coloring. 
Um, and I normally will have my lines, when I color no lines, I will normally have my lines be in the neighborhood of 20%. Um, like I said, she's 30, she's actually 35% is what I had put her at. So I wanted the lines to be dark enough that you guys could see, but light enough that I can kind of wash them out some. So what's the difference between Sweet Sentiment cardstock and Cryogen Metallic cardstock? Um, cryogen, I don't like so much because it bleeds and it really absorbs a ton of your ink. Um, so the Sweet Sentiment cardstock is different in that it has um, multiple types of cardstock fibers in it, where Cryogen just has the one. Um, I do use the same type of shimmer that Cryogen does, so that's probably why you see some similarities because there is a little bit of that same type of shimmer as Cryogen, um, but this is a whole other thing. The other scenario is, is that the Sweet Sentiment cardstock, every layer of it is, um, is coated. So the first layer will actually absorb your ink, but then the rest of the layers will actually hold your ink so that the pigment stays nice and bright and sharp. Um, so there's actually quite a few differences in the Sweet Sentiment cardstock than there is in the Cryogen cardstock. Oops, sorry. Um, this is also an 89 pound cardstock. Um, I made that a cover weight. Good morning, Holly. Good morning, Kat. Um, so that it could fit through your printers without having too much issue with that. And um, I also wanted this to have a tiny bit of texture. So it has a little bit more texture on it than the cryogen. So you can color on it with pencils as well or watercolors. So we're gonna get started. Um, I'm going to pull out just my classic skin blend, um, mainly because I want to show you guys just a, a nice, easy, classic skin blend to do. And um, I feel like it's wintertime and she's ice skating, so she's probably fairly pale skinned. So, because <laughs> me in the wintertime, I'm super pale, in case you couldn't tell. Very pale. Um, so I have E000, E00, E21, E11, and E04. I know EO4 is really, really, really dark, but we're gonna color with that so that you can see um, really what's going on. Um, welcome everyone. <laughs> it's great, I'm heavy handed, so I do notice more bleeding with my cryogen. Yes, if you're heavy handed, cryogen will bleed on you. Um, Sweet Sentiment cardstock will not bleed as much. If you're really, really heavy handed, you can soak the fibers, but you'll see, um, I, I tend to oversaturate my paper a lot and I needed a paper that could take that. So that's part of why I have this paper. So I'm gonna start with my E000. Um, you guys notice, number one, that I have um, washi tape on my markers. Um, the reason my skin blend has two washi tapes on it is because um, I have multiples of these markers. So these are, these are my favorite children. <laughs> That's why they have two. Um, other than that, the only reason they have uh, washi tape on them is for when I go to crops and stuff. I can keep track of which markers are mine. So there's really no other reason other than that. Um, you want to start by taking both caps off. Um, those of you that are in my Sweet Sentiment group know all about this song and dance. Um, if you don't take both caps off, you will see that the Copic markers are um, pressurized. The barrels are pressurized. So if you leave one cap on and one cap off, all of the ink will go to the point of least resistance. And so you'll notice that you'll get blobs on your paper and stuff because all of the ink is rushing down to this point because there's no pressure at this point keeping it in there. So if you take both caps off, the barrel will pressurize itself just by virtue of having air coming into both ends. So the barrel will pressurize itself. You'll have much more control over your nib and how much ink comes out of it, and you won't get those blobs unless you've overfilled your marker. You'll also notice on my marker, I have this little nib. Um, this specific nib is called, what's it called, Terry? Um, optional nibs, fine point nib, okay? I found a pack of these on clearance, so hey, sorry you didn't get that one, but 79 cents was awesome. Um, so you get three per a pack, and they're these little, these little fine point nibs. They're essentially a bullet nib, and they're made for Copic markers. 
I don't use them very much, so I don't suggest running out and buying yourself a whole ton of them, but every once in a while I do use them. So you'll notice I have them on all of my skin blend, and I also have it on my colorless blender. I know, it was a deal. I grabbed them really fast. Um, the other is my sketch, um, my sketch marker, durr, um, my super brush nib. These are um, the standard nibs that come on your Copic sketch markers and your Copic chow markers. And these are the brush nibs. They're, the, they're what I use 99.995% of the time. So these are the brush nibs. They're what you're, what you're wanting to use. Um, usually Copic markers come with a chisel nib. And I do use that a lot when I'm making backgrounds and such. But for now, this is where we're gonna start. So, um, I'm going to start with skin. Hey, Laura, how are you, my dear? Um, they are hard, hard to find. You are correct. So, I'm going to start with my skin. What I'm going to do is I have my E000, and this is just my base color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a nice, even coat all over her skin. Um, I usually work in sections, so I'll like do her face, and then I'll do her um, arms and hands, and then I'll do her legs, but she's dressed for winter, so it's just face and hands, so I'm going to go ahead and just do all of her skin at the same time. And if I get really quiet, it just means I'm concentrating, so... Um, Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Janice is here to um, answer any questions that you might have while I'm not paying attention to my phone. Okay. Um, hi, sweeties. Yes, if you are a Sweet Sentiment Group member, we have taken to calling you sweeties. A lot of people decided that that's what Sweet Sentiment people were going to be called. So EO4 is the, the next marker that I'm using. I can't find my screen. Is this close enough to you guys or do you want me to like zoom in a little? How about that? You won't be able to see the marker cap, but at least you'll be able to see better kind of what I'm doing. Okay, so this is where I have to make a decision. Um, I wanna make a decision on light source. So I'm gonna say that the sun is coming from up here above her and kind of shining straight down on her face. So I'm gonna start putting shadows. I know her little nose is gonna leave a shadow, so that's where I'm going to start, okay? Um, you'll notice as I need more control over my marker, I hold it closer to the nib. If I need less control, I hold it back on the barrel. Never ever touch the nib of your marker. Um, aw, thanks Janice. Never ever touch the nib of your marker because this works, um, you guys, if you use Pro Markers, if you use Copic Markers, if you use Spectrum Noir Markers, any of that stuff. Um, never ever touch the nib of your marker because the oils in your skin, you can see where I color, um, the oils in your skin will um, actually clog your nib. Baseball game and just saw and joined. Thanks, Mickey. <laughs> Mama Sherry. Have fun at your baseball game. So I'm just gonna go around where her hair would cast a shadow on her face. Again, like I said, the sun is coming from right in front of her. So I'm just gonna leave a shadow basically on all of this fringe here. Um, we call this bangs over here in uh, the United States, they're called bangs but I know in the UK you guys call it fringe. I love all the colloquialisms and stuff. I talk endlessly to Janice and um, my other friend Judith and my friend Margarita about all of the colloquialisms that are different across the pond. <laughs> Language fascinates me. So we're coloring kind of a holiday image, and so have any of you guys decorated for Christmas yet? Or are you anti-decorating for Christmas until after Turkey Day? You guys know I've decorated. Okay. 
you teach them to me. Yes, you do. It's a thing. Oh, I better do. Um, taking the piss, Janice. Taking the piss. Yeah, we don't do that over here. <laughs> that is not a thing over here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I still can't believe that. I laughed so hard over that. And then I told Mama Sherry, Mama Sherry laughed so hard over that. That is not, like, I had to look it up janice and see what it actually meant because that is just not <laughs> this is not something that is said over here it sounded like you needed to use the loo normally but after thanksgiving is late this year so it is true that is very true um i used to wait until december 17th um, because that is my husband's birthday. And so I didn't want to have a bunch of Christmas decorations up for his birthday. And then, um, it got to where I was doing the day after Thanksgiving because that was what was traditional in my family. And then it got to where my husband was just like, um, my birthday was November 2nd. So, um... It got to where my husband was just like, if you want to decorate on your birthday, go ahead. And I was like, sweet. So he got all of the decorations down for me and that's what I did on my birthday. Um, maybe I can set this right here. E11. Now you guys notice I rotate my paper a lot. You always want to rotate to where your wrist is in a happy place. Um, I know this especially because I'm dealing with a wrist injury right now. And um, so I try to take special precautions and rotate my paper even more. Um, but you'll come out always with a much better result if you are rotating your paper to where your wrist and hand are in a comfortable position. So don't be afraid to rotate your paper a lot. And if I rotate too much and make you guys motion sick and dizzy, I'm super sorry. Um, you wait until after Lewis's birthday. I didn't realize his birthday was December 9th. I guess I didn't know that. I need to send him some candy from the States. Like I do Margarita. I send her all kinds of crazy candy from over here that you guys think is wild. Like, sh like, um, I have to take Christmas down early because the youngest son's birthday is just, oh, cat, my sister's birthday. Hey, Mickey. Um, Nona's here. You wrote the hate the paper a lot too. Yeah. Yes, my Sandy. I know you do. Um, I didn't even know you were here, Sandy. <laughs> um, my sister's, my oldest sister's birthday is on the 26th. And so she used to always like threaten our lives and she'd be like, if you decorate, or if you wrap my um, Christmas, if you wrap my birthday presents in Christmas paper, I will hunt you down and murder you. So, you know, we got used to taking Christmas down like the morning after Christmas. Um, my parents don't, but I always did. Now I'm just going around where I went with that EO4 to kind of soften the edges and blend these two together. Copic markers don't actually blend. Um, they don't mix in the sense of like, if you mix paint and you mix red and yellow and you get orange, you, um, with Copic markers, it's very, very different. They layer. So the reason you're seeing orange is because the yellow is laying on top of the red. I did miss it. I miss a lot. Um, because when you're coloring, you know this Sandy, when you're coloring, you're paying attention to your paper and not all of the comments that are coming through. But Sandy's here. So if you guys have any questions, um, we thought of doing half birthdays. That's a good idea. My birthday's close enough to Christmas. I wouldn't want it any closer. This is E21. Um, if you guys have Copic questions and stuff that I'm missing, Sandy will answer for me because um, Sandy is my right-hand woman and she always helps me and 
I adore her and I bet you she knows more about Copic markers than I do. So. So Sandy is here. Here she comes to save the day. How is that for throwing you under the bus, my, my dear? <laughs> that was a good bus throwing, wasn't it? So if you notice, the way I'm rotating my paper, I'm usually always pushing the ink back into itself. Um, I don't want to drag this darker ink out into my highlight. I always want to push it back into itself. So even when I'm coloring the opposite direction, I am pushing this ink back into itself. Um, again, because these markers don't necessarily blend, they layer. So it's easier to push those markers back where they are. A turkey baby! I know, Sandy loves Copic Talk. Sandy and I can sit here and talk about our markers all day long. And the funny thing is, is we know our markers like we have children. And so um, we can be like, oh, well, my E21 does this. Well, my this one does this. And my that one does that. Like my RV99 is stupid. It, um, it always bleeds, no matter what. I have drained the heck out of that marker, and it always bleeds. Making the eyeshadow is very difficult for me. Um, I usually use, so E21 is the center color in my blend. Um, I use five and seven marker blends. So when I use the five markers, um, or seven markers, or even three markers, whatever the center color is, is the true color. So that E21 is her actual true skin color, and it is her skin color without, um, yeah, my E29 gets sticky a lot, um, without highlight or shadow. It's that true skin color. So I use that to go around the eyes um, to make them appear that they're not in highlight or shadow, unless I'm coloring something that they need to be. So um, like some of the Halloween critters and stuff that I color, um, I make their eyes a lot darker. Um, it just depends on what it is that you're coloring and how dark you want them to be. I feel like the sun is shining right on her face, so I don't want them to be super dark. And I hope you guys are like ready for the long haul because it's going to take a while to color this girl. <laughs> I hope y'all have your coffee. Seven marker blends. Yes, Deanna. <laughs> seven marker blends are a thing. Um, I usually tend to do seven marker blends when I'm doing hair um, because I like to have lots and lots of texture in the hair. Um, so you won't see it too much on skin and clothing and stuff. So don't, don't get too crazy on me. Don't get too squirrely and run away. Now, um, oh, you are? Sandy, where are you going now? You are always traveling, my dear. Um, so now I'm going to take my R20. And yes, this has two, um, two things on it because of, I use it for my skin blend a lot. Um, so I have a, uh, I have a, a happy R20 and I have a not so happy R20. You really do need to um, quit your job in order to practice. I agree. So my R20 I'm going to use for her cheeks and I'm going to use these little brush stroke motions because I don't want it to be perfectly even. Um, you know when you're out ice skating like you do, um, your cheeks get cold and red and they don't always do that very evenly. So I'm going to use the R20 to do that. And then I'm going to, oh, awesome, Sandy. And then I'm going to use my E000. And I'm going to push that back into itself. I don't want to drag it out anymore, but I want to make it nice and, and even. So I don't want those lines to be visible. So I'm just blending that in, saturating it so I can move the pigment around so that it's a soft pigment.
And there we go. Now, one thing that I wish somebody had told me when I first started, um, are you dressing up this time, Sandy? Or is it just Dale dressing up? They do Comic-Cons and they dress up like crazy um, creatures and they are awesome. I'm going to zoom this out just a little bit because I want to show you guys. Um, something that I wish people had told me when I started Copic coloring. Um, I thought that I was doing it wrong because I was getting this ghosting on the other side of the paper. Um, and I was always like, I'm doing this wrong because I'm bleeding through the paper and it's horrible. Um, I found out later, like a couple of years later, and somebody told me, oh, if you're not getting this on the opposite side of the paper, you're doing it wrong. So um, somebody told me that they're like, if you can't tell what your image is by looking at the back of the paper, if you can't see that you're coloring, you know, a dog or a bear or a person or whatever, then you're totally doing it wrong. So don't be afraid to saturate your paper. Um, here's one that I was coloring. I look at her eyes, look at her skin, you know, you can see her hair, you can see everything that I was doing just because it's right there on the back of the paper. So don't be afraid to saturate your paper and do that, okay? All right, my little my little tip, my little advice. I wish somebody had told me. All right, now we're gonna move into hair. Um, and if somebody wants to keep track of the markers that I'm using, um, Janice, maybe you wanna keep track of the markers that I'm using or something so that we can post them later, that would be awesome. Um, but I'm gonna use this hair blend, and it's my 70s. You guys, I'm really into this like ashy, mousy kind of brown right now, and it comes out really pretty. It's super fun to watch develop. So I have E79. Um, Janice, I have used E04, E11, E21, E00, E000, and R20. Oh, good job, Deanna. I always want to do the 30-day challenge and then I never can. Um, I can never keep up with it. Um, yes, Nana, um, Nana Butter. That's so, that's so cute. It makes me giggle every time I see you on. Um, close it and come back out. Or close it and come back in. Um, no surprise on those skin colors. Okay, so the hair color, E79, 77. 74, 71, and 70. So this is the true color of her hair. These are shadows and these are highlights. Dale says, bingo! Dale, you win a prize. <laughs> Except for there's no E in bingo, so you lose. <laughs> oh, Dale. All right, so with hair. Hair is... um. Same skin colors I always I use a bunch of different skin colors, but I just happen to want to go fairly pale with this girl today. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, we're thinking that the sun is like in front of her face. Um, did someone say prizes? Um, we're thinking that the sun is in front of her face, so we're gonna have to shadow her hair accordingly. So we know that all of this fringe here is in front of what is in her ponytail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nice, super thin line and outline this fringe. Notice I'm still using kind of brush strokes because I don't want it to be like this perfectly straight line that I'm gonna have to worry about breaking up later. Um, Sandy, you're absolutely right. I don't think they get used enough either and they are gorgeous, especially watching them develop in hair. So I'm creating a shadow and I'm also creating a um a starting point yes i love this image when i saw her i was like oh my gosh i need her so much and then i'm gonna come off of this and i'm going to go in the direction of the hair so i will tell you this hair is like a love hate thing for me and ask janice i was just totally complaining to her about hair um i adore doing hair so much 
and intricate hair is like one of those things. It takes a really, really, really long time to color, but when you're done coloring it, you can just like sit back and be like, yeah, I did that, because it's awesome. So, Janice tends to draw extremely intricate hair, but I'm gonna tell you this, totally complaining, but I'm gonna tell you this, her hair makes sense. So trust her lines. Um, it I, I can tell that she takes a long time thinking about where these strands should go and which direction they should go and doesn't just haphazardly throw the lines in there like some people do. So what I'm going to tell you is the artist drawn lines on this hair, trust them and use them to your advantage. A lot of the times when I'm coloring, and part of the reason I color no lines so much is because I hate the lines in hair. And so I'm constantly just coloring over them and ignoring them. Um, Janice is one of the very, 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 very few artists. Um, oh, sweet, Sandy, thank you. Um, Janice is one of the very few artists that I actually use all of her artist drawn lines for the hair and really go along with them and pay attention to which direction they're going. So feather in your cap, Janice, cause your hair is amazing. Um, Ilea, good morning, my friend. So I'm using the lines that she has drawn to kind of guide where my shadows are going. And I'm not just outlining her hair, I'm making all of these little brush strokes and I know it's gonna look really funny for a little bit until I get all of the shadow in here until we start moving through the color spectrum. Um, I follow these lines in, but not all the way because I still need a highlight in here, okay? So I've done her head. Now what I do is I come back, I always kind of come back to center and look at it again from the perspective of where the sun would be. So this little piece of hair right here is behind in the fringe. And so I'm gonna shadow both sides of this to make it fall back. Okay, see how I did that? Now. I'm gonna look at all of these little pieces of hair and I'm gonna see what pops out at me as being in front of one another. So one's here and one's here and one's here kind of thing. So I feel like this piece is definitely in front of these other pieces. So I'm gonna lay a little shadow down here um, following the line that she has drawn. And then I'm gonna flip it over so that I can shadow it properly. I'm sorry if my big dumb hand is getting in the way. Okay. So I've added just a little bit of shadow back there for that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing actually behind it because I feel like it's definitely in front of this piece of hair. So I'm gonna take these little brush strokes and just lightly brush on the paper to add some hair to that, okay? Now this piece of hair is definitely behind these two pieces. And so part of why you colored no lines is if you're not comfortable doing all of this, you can kind of pass over some of this with the no lines technique because you won't have when you're done, you won't have all of these lines showing. <laughs> Look at those tiny brush strokes. <laughs> I can tell you, Deanna, the only difference between your brush strokes and mine is that I've done millions more. So the more you color, the more tiny your brush strokes are gonna get. You always want to go with the direction of the hair. 
so that it doesn't throw your eye off. Um, if you're going like in a different direction than what the hair should be going, your eye will immediately go to it and think and tell your brain that something's very wrong here. And so you don't want that. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna come back up here. And since this is kind of folded over on itself, I'm gonna add a couple of little brush strokes up here. Just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Okay. Notice they don't all end in the same spot. Um, you're watching exactly how I do it, Janice. <laughs> um, I don't want them all to end in the same spot because then it will look like, um, it'll look very odd. So you notice if you look at a photograph of somebody or whatever, their hair is very tonal and it doesn't all end in the same spot, even with an extremely light highlight. So you wanna make sure to make all of the hair kind of end in different spots. I'm gonna go down this um, little piece of fringe here because I feel like it's behind this big piece. And some people can do these brush strokes away from them. Some people can only do it towards them. Um, it's okay, no matter which way you can or cannot do it. I can do them in both directions. So it just depends on what you're comfortable with. And I practice, I do, I do. I promise, I practice. It's just a very light touch um, is all I do. You notice that for every like three or four brush strokes, I only really get one on the paper. Um, it's, it's because I'm taking the time to make sure that I'm super light with these. So if you're really heavy handed, um, it takes a long while to learn the brush stroke technique um, just because it's a lot harder. <laughs> 10 years. Sandy, you've been practicing a lot longer than me. I haven't even owned a Copix for that long. Now I'm going to come in off of the side here and see how Janice has kind of curled her bangs in this way. Um, I'm going to kind of add a couple of brush strokes just to curl them in from the shadow. Okay. So we're kind of done with, you know, her head and that part. Um, I think my issue is I need new nibs for so many of my markers, but they are expensive. They're expensive no matter where you're at. <laughs> um, the best place and best price to get them I've ever always found is Terry. Um, Terry Olson with Stamps Alive. She has the best prices on all of the Copic stuff. So even better than I can get, like I have wholesale accounts in places and Terry's prices are still better than that. So, um, yeah. You are heavy handed Nona. <laughs> okay, so now in this ponytail, I'm gonna start picking out the places that I see that are in shadow. So right away I see that this hair, this big curl of hair is in front of this one. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm dropping this one behind by leaving a shadow on it from the hair that's in front of it. Again, follow these artist-drawn lines. Um, Janice really thinks about the direction of the hair and where it's going, and um, her, her lines are always really spot on. So just follow the lines that she's drawn and you won't get confused. Okay. Now, this piece of hair is in front of this piece of hair. 
How do you know when to replace your nib? There's a lot of different things to do um, to know when you need to replace your nib. Um, I do the same way you do with Copics and pencils. Yes, I do color in pencils as well. And um, it's fairly similar. There's some differences, but yes, I do get what you're saying. There's There, there are a lot of similarities. Um, Deanna, to ask or to answer your question, um, the nib will start to break down. So what that means is instead of having a nice kind of firm paintbrush, you're gonna have like a really soft paintbrush and it will bend like with no pressure. Um, so you will see that you're no longer getting like this nice tip on the nib, this nice pointy tip. It'll kind of start to, to break down and get, oh yeah, see just what Sandy said. <laughs> Um, so it's not, it's not like a nice paintbrush anymore. It's like a, you know, dollar store paintbrush kind of thing. So you'll start to know. Um, also they start to get clogged and when your ink isn't flowing through it very nicely anymore, it can mean either you need to clean your nib or you need to, um, refill your marker. Or, hey, Jane, um, there's a lot of different things you can do. So you'll, you'll notice the more you color that um, when things aren't working properly. Um, learning to color with Copics is just kind of familiarity with your medium. Uh, the more you color, the more you know if things are working properly or not. And so you'll start to feel if your markers need filled or, um, yes, Deanna, absolutely. <laughs> I just had to replace my, my skin, um, nibs. And those are the ones I replace the most often. And you guys know how much I color and I only replace those probably two or three times a year. So it's not that you need to really replace your nibs all that often, but you need to make sure that you take care of them. And um, right now I'm just kind of hoarding my nibs because they're so hard to get. I don't think even Terry has any right now. So, okay, so this is just a matter of breaking down the hair and seeing where these shadows are going to fall. So, um, again, I need to get ready for grandchild's birthday party, so we'll watch you later. Okay, cat. Tell your tell your grandbaby happy birthday from all of us. Um, so this is just a matter of breaking down all of these pieces of hair and figuring out what's in shadow and what's in highlight. So, again, I'm just going down um Do you have, oh, you don't have um, super brush nibs though, Terry, right? Um, okay, so again, I'm gonna follow this piece of hair this direction. And allow it to leave its shadow on the hair beneath it. And then because the hair beneath it kind of goes in this direction, I'm gonna make my brush strokes go in that direction. And again, I'm gonna turn it around so that I can follow the way that the hair goes. Okay. So now you've seen by putting those shadows in there how it lifts that one piece of hair up. Yes, this is what you need, Janice, the super brush. And I think this was Terry's last pack. <laughs> Terry, if I remember right, <laughs> am I wrong? Um, so guys, I don't know if you guys know, but I have just released my own line of stamps, Sweet Sentiment stamps, and one of my artists for my stamps is none other than Miss Janice herself. So, 
Um, I don't think I'm out of line when I say um, Janice will have stamps, um, actual physical stamps available um, through Sweet Sentiment. So if you're looking for any coloring classes or anything like that, um, please let Janice or I know and we can kind of direct you to that. Um, the December kit actually features one of Janice's images and oh my god you guys it's so cute and it's a great mix of Janice and I because it's um her amazing art and my super snarky sentiments so um yeah yeah another one of my artists happens to be here Miss Sandy and so there will be stamp sets from Miss Sandy Ledoux as well um, you know, we're, we're all friends and we support one another and that's, um, that's what we like to do. So if you guys are interested, just let Janice or I know. And, um, we're all about a big crafty community that supports one another and lifts each other up. So that's why we do this stuff together. Right, ladies? Watch you guys leave me hanging. You're like, no, nope, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> I can't wait to play with the December stamps. I know, Holly. I'm like, oh my gosh. I have to do the, I have to film the class still. And I'm just so excited because I just love coloring that image that's for the December set. Um, oh my gosh, they're just so cute. Sentiments are perfect. <laughs> now would we do that to you? Maybe. <laughs> Not gonna lie, maybe. Just for a while though, just to be silly. Wait, Janice, is this right? Would you make me take the piss on that one? Is that how you use that? Did I just figure it out? I'd have to take the piss on that one. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It still cracks me up. I can't believe it. Like, I was telling my husband about that, and he was standing right there when you said it, Janice. And he was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> oh my goodness. So now I'm just kind of going back through and looking at where I think it needs a little more shadow. You notice I turn it right side up and I'm looking at it from where the sun would be so I know if I need a little bit more shadow in certain places so <laughs> oh Janice I love colloquialisms they make me so happy um one that that poor Jude told me <laughs> Um, I had sent her a package and so the context is I had sent her a package and she was um, concerned about shipping. She didn't want me to have to pay a ton on shipping because, you know, things coming from across the pond, shipping is always, you know, insane. So um, she said, I don't want to diddle you on the shipping. And I was like, what? Because over here, that's an entirely different thing. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, you can just diddle your husband and not me. That's fine. <laughs> so now that I've laid in all the shadow, I'm going to go in with my second shadow color. And you'll notice I'll go a lot faster on this um, because... <laughs> It was a good one, Janice, um, because I've already done all the hard work of figuring out where the shadows are. And so um, I can just kind of go in and elongate those shadows with this marker. And I don't have to take as much time because I already took the time and figured it out. Is that something that you guys say too? Or is that a, um, she is from Northern Ireland. So do you guys say I don't want to diddle you on the shipping or, um, I mean, in the States we would say like, I don't want to screw you 
on the shipping. And I mean, it's obviously a little bit more um, <laughs> not politically correct or proper or polite, but it gets the point across. So I could imagine that that's the same type of scenario of where it came from, but yeah. It sounds like over there that's kind of, yes, I know that one here, okay. <laughs> I've never heard you say it, Janice, so that's why I asked. I didn't know if it was an Irish thing that she didn't want to diddle me. <laughs> I'm like a little kid sometimes. We were talking about um, different, different ones, different colloquialisms, and we were talking about, um, we have one that's very offensive to you guys because we say fanny packs. Like if somebody has a fanny pack, and apparently that's something super, super bad over there. Um, you guys call them bum bags, apparently. Because a fanny pack is an entirely other different thing for you. <laughs> oh, and it makes me laugh. And we're mean because we tell our school children, sit down on your fanny. And apparently that's um, not very nice over there. I'm just talking to myself, don't mind me. You guys are all having real conversations about important things like nibs for your markers. And I'm over here saying bad words. Which, if you ask Sandy, is not unlike me. That's how I entertain myself. <laughs> Those girls never needed to say anything <laughs> Uh, oh, Janice, I just adore you. <laughs> Poor Jude, I think I made her spit out her tea on her keyboard when that one came up because I was like, oh my goodness, are you serious? <laughs> she was like, what? What did I say? <laughs> I was like, Wow, over here, that's something entirely different. <laughs> Which is why we love you. <laughs> Thanks, Deanna. Because <laughs> I can entertain myself. <laughs> I'm not much trouble, really. I can entertain myself. You guys just go ahead and talk about me. I'll be over here coloring. Ask Sandy though, she's been around when I've kind of gone off into my own world coloring. And I kind of like, <laughs> I don't know, I just disconnect. I disengage from the real world and I just zone out. And she'll be like talking to me and I'll be like, huh? <laughs> she's like, did you hear me? No. No, I did not. <laughs> oh, I hear my husband making coffee. We do entertain each other. It is true, Janice. So, hair always takes the longest for me, as you can tell, or as you can see, um, because I really take my time I think that it's such a major part, especially with this anime style. Um, since hair is such a major part of it, because they always have so much hair in the anime style. Um, so I always try to take my time and really make it a statement. And really kind of go for it with the hair. Um, I'm using this dark color right here because this is like a, it curls away from the sun. So I'm using that to add texture. I'm 
There we go. We need a retreat so we can all experience the Jamie zone out. <laughs> oh God, Sandy. <laughs> um, I think that Nona is trying to plan something. She wants a bunch of people to come here. And um, uh, Nona is Mickey Harmer, in case you guys didn't know that. Um, she lives in this super nice neighborhood that has like a clubhouse. And we could fit like 20 of us in there. And so I think it would be a lot of fun for a bunch of us to get together and color and hang out for a whole weekend. So um, it, it's in the works. It'll happen eventually. Um, we just have to make sure it's when you can be here, Sandy, because I can't teach classes in person without you. <laughs> she, I am. <laughs> yes, please. We'd have to figure out a really good time of year when you all could make it over here. And um, Janice, just so you know, my husband and I yesterday were talking about a trip to England. Maybe in the summertime. Just FYI. So you guys notice these subsequent colors go a lot faster. Um, again, because I'm not, I don't have to think about where to lay each shadow. So I can go in here a lot faster and do these brush strokes. And and zone out apparently. I don't know how long we would be there. Probably just a couple of days, Janice, um, because he wants to go to Ireland as well. But the farthest I've been out of the country and... Yes, Terry, we would totally have you come with your Copics. Yes, yes, yes. You'd have to box all that stuff up. Is that feasible? And we'd be coloring Scrapper's Delights images and Ledoux Designs images. And it would be so much fun. Yes, I start singing even though I can't sing. It's fine. Just go with it. Deanna, you're not that far, right? You're in Arizona. My E70s are kind of sticky after coloring. Just used a kneaded eraser. Um, yes, I do want to visit your sheet, Mickey. Um, yes, you can use a kneaded eraser, but um, if they're really sticky, what you need to do is clean your nibs. Um, so you can take um, like a cotton ball or I, I actually don't really like to use cotton balls because they have too much fiber on them. Um, but something with the, um, colorless blender solution on it and wipe off your nibs. And then the other reason they could be sticky is because you need to refill them. So consider refilling them. I have on order with Terry all the rest of the refills that I need, so I will have every refill Sandy and I can be just like you. Um, no physical store, just a, and I know you only have an online store, Janice, but we would totally make that a thing. Don't you worry. Ah, oh, Sandy gets to meet all the sweet sentiment people. Okay, now I'm on E71. Of course, Holly. And so I'm going to go th all the way through the highlight, but notice that I'm still going to leave white in there um, because I still have one more marker in my highlight. And so I don't want to wash out the highlight entirely. I want to kind of leave room for it to breathe.
Ugh, Janice, I love all this hair. It drives me nuts and I love it all at the same time. I'm the same way with pleats though. They drive me insane and I absolutely love coloring them. I think because they're such a challenge. The hair and the pleats are such a challenge. And that's why I really like them because it really challenges me and it really makes me think. And that's part of what I like about coloring is pushing everything else aside and being able to just focus on the coloring itself. Because this is supposed to be our therapy and be relaxing, right? I'm waiting for you all to start laughing. Yes, Sandy, I know. You color literally everything. Not quite relaxing yet. <laughs> You'll get there, Deanna. You'll get there. <laughs> I swear a lot while coloring. Learning to practice is hard. <laughs> I usually swear a lot while coloring too when I'm not on camera. Sometimes I swear when I'm on camera. I try not to. But so now I'm just kind of going over and filling in the white. Um, if I miss a spot, that's fine. But I'm still using the same brush strokes and I'm still going with the direction of the hair. Um, after spending all that time putting all that texture in here, I don't want to lose all of that now. I was just telling Janice earlier, I love watching hair develop. Um, usually the first two or three or even four colors, um, it doesn't look right. And then when you put in those highlight colors, I mean, look at how that happens. Look at how that jumps out at you. So, so fun. All right. I know, I love all that hair. That's part of what I adore about these anime images um, and these little chibi images, they just, oh God, they just make me happy. Okay, so we're gonna color her jeans next. And um, with her jeans, you guys know my favorite G jean blend. Who knows it? I know some of you sweet sentiment people know it. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> Aren't you driving or are you listening to me while you drive? There it is. Who knows my jean blend? Gorgeous. Yeah, there's a lot of swearing that happens, Laura. You know that. <laughs> Sandy knows it for reals. <laughs> um, okay, so my favorite denim blend is B99. 97, 95, 93, and 91. So Janice, if you happen to be writing those markers down, this is the jean blend. Forgot my scanner, so I'm sitting here waiting for someone to bring me one. Oh, hey Rhea, how are you? Long time no see. It's been almost a year since I've seen you, girl. Um, so this is my favorite jean blend, and this is where we're gonna go. So we're gonna start coloring her jeans here. So I start with the shadow color. And again, I'm going to pretend that the sun is pretty much like right in front of her face. So with that being said, there's going to be a little shadow from her shirt. Her shirt's going to cast a shadow onto her jeans. Um, I like to leave a lot of texture in jeans, so I do use kind of the little brush strokes as well um, in my jeans. And you'll also notice that I oversaturate them a lot. Um... That's just so that I can get some extra texture in them. I think it looks kind of like the cottony denim-ish type texture 
when I oversaturate my paper. So I'll show you what that means when we get there. Um, this is a wicked dark color, so I'm going to use it fairly sparingly. Um, and there you go, Sandy. Slow down. Need pen. Okay. Um, B99. B97. B95. B93. And B91. And now Dale can call Mingo. Because <laughs> I just called his whole row of bingo um, on his card. <laughs> so I'm going to shade pretty far down this leg in the back because the sun's coming from this direction. So the back of this leg would be curved away from the sun. I'm also going to kind of do that back here. And I'm going to leave a little crease in her jeans where her knee would kind of crease that. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave a shadow from her skate onto her jeans. Because I know where the skate kind of goes over her jeans, it would leave a little cast shadow. You're taking the fist saying that's... <laughs> Janice. See, and that's cussing to me, say taking the piss, but my husband says that piss is not a cuss word. I think it is. Did we have this debate, Janice? I can't remember if you and I had this debate as well. All right. Yeah, Sandy knows Sandy knows most of my blends like so much so that I can be like, remember that blend I used for that one thing all oh, that one time? And she'd be like, yeah, it was this, this, and this. And I'm like, I don't know how you do that, but thank you. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm going to turn this so that I can push this color into itself. I don't want to drag that dark blue further out into the highlight. So I want to color it back into itself. So I'm always going to be pushing that darker color back to where it's supposed to go and not coming out any further with it. Okay, I know I'm probably going to make you guys sick like rotating my paper so much, but I apologize. I always feel indecent coloring their, uh, what do you guys say? Their bits. <laughs> it is your superpower. Sandy can also pick up your Copic marker and tell you if it needs to be filled just by feeling it in her hand. She can like hold your marker like this and just weigh it. Um, I know, Rhea, isn't it crazy to watch somebody else color when you're used to being a teacher? Um, Rhea teaches classes a lot too. And, um, so to watch somebody else color when you're used to teaching is definitely like, <laughs> it's like an out of body experience, huh? <laughs> but then you kind of look at things and you're like, oh, I wouldn't have done that that way. Or, oh, hey, maybe I'm going to do that next time. So I'm just going to add a little, um, shadow under her knee there. Just because I know that her jeans would crease there. Sandy is an alien. Yes, you you have got it. <laughs> You're not a pinky finger out when drinking tea type of bread. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jess. I freaking adore you, man. <laughs> 
Oh, that was funny. I just have this vision in my mind. And get that pinky up. Now again, this is the third color in my blend. So this is the true color of her jeans. Um, by true color, I mean there's no highlight and there's no shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around this section um, to kind of outline her jeans because it would kind of curve, her leg would curve, it's round, not flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and color that and to create that kind of dimension that your eye is looking for. I mean, the whole point of coloring like this is to create um, an optical illusion. You want this to read like it's a three-dimensional object and not a two-dimensional object. So I will tell you that that is what you're trying to achieve. And that's kind of what, part of what got me into coloring, to be honest with you guys, is um, most of you guys know my story, but I am one of the least artistic people you will ever meet. <laughs> right now you're looking at her bits. <laughs> How indecent of you, Rhea. <laughs> um, I am, as I need a tittle. <laughs> God, I don't even know what that means. Anyways, um, I'm one of the least artistic people you will ever meet. I am not a crafty person um, by any stretch of the imagination. All of you guys that can make these like interactive cards and all of this kind of stuff, it just, it floors me because I can't do that. Um, I know some of you will roll your eyes and be like, you're not artistic, whatever. Um, but it's actually true. <laughs> You have to pee. <laughs> oh, that cracks me up. Um, not that you have to pee, but the way you said it. <laughs> um, while you're out, could you get me a coffee <laughs> on your way back? That would be lovely. Um, anyways, so I have figured out a way to use my markers to trick the mind. So all I've really done... Um, <laughs> Summer, you're missing out on all this good stuff. I'm glad you've joined us. Um, so I have figured out how to use a medium to trick the mind into thinking it's looking at a three-dimensional object. So in all honesty, I don't really look at this as I'm coloring. I look at this as where to put each color so that I can make this look like a three-dimensional object. Um, so a lot of people that come to me and they say, well, I can't color. A lot of the times I tell them, yeah, I can't color either. And they roll their eyes and I say, I really can't. I, um, have learned where to place the specific tones of the specific markers. And I've learned how to use this medium to trick the eye into thinking it's looking at a three dimensional object. Um, oh, summer was that awesome. So, um, if any of you are kind of having trouble with the whole coloring aspect because you don't feel like you're a colorist or you don't feel like you're artistic, and again, look at how much I saturated the paper, um, don't look at it as you're coloring. Look at it as I just put this highlight color in the lightest part of her jeans because that's where the sun would hit it the most. And so I'm pulling that part forward to make it look three-dimensional. Because like if you were to look at my finger, see how the light is hitting this part? And then see how this is in shadow? And see how this is in shadow? So with that being rounded, if I were to choose my skin colors, this would be E04, this would be E11, this would be E21, E00, and E000. Okay? You are tricking... Um, you just ate hot donuts. I don't even want to hear it from you. Um, you're tricking the eye into thinking it's looking at a three-dimensional object. Jude! There you are! I've been talking about you all morning. Okay, guys. Um, 
let's do, do we want to go like full on Christmas with this? Or um, I'm thinking like red sweater and green scarf. What do you think? Any ideas? Any, any, any ideas? Anybody want to see something different? My red blend is very different than Sandy's red blend. We have different favorite reds. Um, I'll go this route today. Duh, right, Rhea? Durr, this is what we're doing. Ooh, <laughs> let me throw my markers. Don't mind me, I just threw that one under my desk. It's fine. I didn't want to use that one anyways. All right. So my go-to red blend. Um, I'm back. Ooh, can you do the knitted look on the scarf? Um, yeah, let's, let's try to do that. A striped sweater. You guys are like throwing everything at me like crazy. Um, I do a plaid sweater on the image for the December class in Sweet Sentiment. And so um, I will teach you guys how to do that in the Sweet Sentiment class. But that is um, the December class. So I think we're just going to, if we're going to do a texture on the scarf, we're going to do the sweater plain. I think. I don't know. You never know. Okay, so um, one of my favorite red blends is our 59, our 29, our 27, our 14, and our 05. Um, this lends itself to being kind of an orangey red instead of a pinky red, um, but orange is my favorite color, so that's how we're gonna go with it. Thanks, lovey-dovey. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go in here and um, I'm gonna lay in the shadows first. Now, usually when I color with red, I save it for the last color because red has a tendency to bleed. But I'm gonna do like an olive green scarf so I'm not too worried about it. But if I was gonna do like a white shirt or something, I wouldn't color with the red until after I did the white. Um, red is just notorious for being a pain in the butt and bleeding everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and shadow under the scarf here. And Rhea, do you find that too? I know Sandy does. That red just likes to bleed everywhere. And then I like to lay kind of a little bit of a thicker shadow down here because it's like her armpit and stuff. Um, oh my goodness, because Copic markers are pressurized. And so since the barrel is pressurized, if you color with one cap on, all of the ink will go to the point of least resistance. So all of the ink will start headed towards your other nib. And if the ink is headed towards that nib, I don't have as much control over how much flow comes out of that nib. So I will either get blobs on my paper or I won't get those super fine lines that I'm looking for. So if you take both caps off, it equalizes the pressure in the barrel. And then um, I have control over all the pressure or all the ink that comes out by how much pressure I put on the nib. Okay, so it's almost time for me to make fun of Janice. Are you guys ready? Janice, are you ready? I think you know what's coming. I'm gonna take the piss on this one. Here we go. Um, Rhea, have you tried the Sweet Sentiment coloring paper? I had my reds bleed on Express It, and I find Express It is really, really expensive. So, even though I used to be a total Express It junkie, and that's all that I would use, um, I 
have created my own paper and I love it because it stops a lot of the problems that I had dealt with as a colorist. Sandy uses it now too and we were both just express it snobs. Um, yes, make fun of Janice. It's so much fun. Raya, you're gonna have to try it. Um, okay, so we're gonna make fun of Janice here. Um, right now I'm just adding some, I'm following the lines that she drew to add texture to the shirt. Um, yeah, we're gonna gang up on you. So Janice likes to make very heavy chested girls. <laughs> I always say they all got implants. All of Janice's girls got implants. So, you got a shadow around her boobs <laughs> because they're very large. Um, if you color with no lines, you can kind of downplay them a little bit. But if you color with black lines, um, she puts the shadows in there or the lines in there to define her chest. So, um, just FYI, <laughs> they're very busty girls. <laughs> She likes boobs. <laughs> this is R29. Again, I'm going to go in and I'm going to push that darker color into the shadow. Always keeping that darker color where it belongs. Um, so, Rhea, the difference between the Sweet Sentiment paper and the Expressive paper is um, the Sweet Sentiment paper, your ink will actually um, change the color of the pigment on the first layer of paper. And so you can go back in and manipulate it. Where with Expressive paper, it is designed so that the ink stays on top of the paper and doesn't go into the paper. Um, <laughs> it's no lie. So it's a little bit different medium. So you have to give it a couple of tries to get used to it. Um, but it definitely takes care of any of the stickiness and tackiness that tends to happen on the expressive paper that I noticed. And um, it definitely is, it's a different way of coloring. But once you get used to it, it's like there's no going back because you have so much more um, room and availability to manipulate your ink and so like I could set this down and walk away right now and I could come back in two days and still be able to get a smooth blend on these colors um, because of the way the pigment of this paper works um, with the pigment of the ink or I'm sorry the fibers of this paper works with the fibers of the ink so it um, it's definitely once you once you rehydrate the ink, you can manipulate it just like it's freshly laid down and express it. If I were to do that, I would start to get blotches. So I wanted something that was for all of us people that like, you know, have children or pets or husbands that are like children. <laughs> That in the middle of your coloring something, you have to get up and go tend to them. And so I wanted to be able to come back and still have the same capability of manipulating my paper and my coloring as I did before. So as you can tell, I've spent a lot of time becoming a paper geek. I didn't really intend to become a paper geek, but it happened. I like to color with... Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper. I have never heard of that paper. Never ever. That sounds really cool. So now I'm on R27. Um, Sandy, am I correct that this is the marker that you like don't use? You use 46. I think. Yeah, Rhea, absolutely. It's fun. It's it's fun and stressful um, making your own paper because you're really putting putting yourself out there. And like, I mean, I don't physically make my paper. I hope you guys know that. I I go through a manufacturer. Um, <laughs> I don't. F 
physically make my own paper. Here's these big hooters, Janice. Gotta color her hooters. Um, but yeah, to try to formulate your own paper and go through all of these different tests and color on it and color on it again and color on it some more and, you know, be so nitpicky about it. All right, now our 14. I also wanted to keep it affordable. I know a lot of people are always complaining about Express It being so pricey. And for me, like I get it, I understand, but I also understand that, you know, if I'm paying $7 per marker, which I don't because I go through Terry, but if I'm paying $7 per marker, I'm not gonna buy $3 paper, you know? Um, a lot of this has to do with your your a lot of your ability can be hampered by using the wrong paper or the wrong coloring medium so just fyi yeah big hooters are a thing see janice big hooters are a thing at anime conventions so you're right on par with all of this i love 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 that you do anime like true style anime and then you also do the chibis because oh they're so stinking cute i can't even help it they're so cute look at that bright red shirt having a hard time figuring out how to get the skater um janice can you explain how to do the progressive challenge um so like carrie ann and people that are new to the challenge can um participate I'm gonna use the same red blend to do her lips while Janice explains. So I'm just going through and putting this teeny tiny line at the corner of her lips and in between her lips. I'll hold this up closer to the camera so you can see. So that's where the shadow is going to be. And then I'm going to use the R29. And I'm just essentially going to trace that same line. Leaving room to put a highlight in her lips. Rhea, what's the wow face for? <laughs> then I'm going to skip to the R05 because her lips are so tiny. I'm only using a three marker blend. So I'm going to skip to the R05 to fill in the highlight. And there you have her little lips. Now, I have the UPS guy at my door, so um, be prepared for a doorbell and dog barking, because that's going to be a thing. I don't even know what I'm getting UPS today, but I'm getting something. Kaylee, are you still here? The UPS guy's here. I'm scared. <laughs> ah, follow the link above, and all you have to do is request the image. I want to know why the UPS guy decided it was okay to walk across my front lawn as opposed to walking up the sidewalk, but no, yeah, whatever. All right, so I'm going to use my favorite green blend. And you guys, most of you know, I'll beat him up. Do it, Kaylee. Weirdo. Um, anyways. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. Um, YG99. 
YG97, YG95, YG93, and YG91. Um, this YG95, is it Terry? Has been sold out for a super duper long time. Um, Copic has sold out of them and I don't know what they're doing about it, but if you need to, you can replace this with a lot of different colors. There's many different colors you can replace it with. So, Summer wants us to do a pattern, like the, um, the pattern you would do if it was um, like knit together. So I always kind of draw myself a little reference um, to kind of look at. But essentially, you're gonna do like a herringbone pattern sort of thing. So I'm gonna start by laying in the shadows. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna go and draw these little lines up. And then I'm gonna draw kind of a line that goes up with them. Now the next row, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a thin line down. Now the next row will go down. And then this last row, it's gonna go back up. Okay. I'm also gonna draw some of these little lines down. I'm gonna treat this kind of like it's hair. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm always like, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to separate this into three. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, up. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that doesn't seem as complicated as I thought it would be. No, it's actually, it's really not summer. It's not so bad at all. It's just in being brave enough to start it. That's usually the hardest part. I'm gonna shadow underneath her chin. Now these are gonna go sideways because it's wrapped around her neck. Just like that. Pull it up close again. This is the best group ever. It is a really great group. I love this group. Okay. Now, usually, um, you know, like I did, I pulled out my five color blend, but because now this is such a tiny, tiny, tiny little spot, I'm gonna skip my 97. I'm gonna go into my 95. Um, cause 99 and 97 are really, really close to the same color and I don't want to wash this out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath each one of these. Just on the underside of it, which is what underneath means. Don't mind me. It's okay. I just need more coffee.
and then come down here to this part. I missed this one. Okay. And then on this one, I'm gonna just choose the side opposite of the sun. So if the sun's over here, then this side would be the side that would get the shadow. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna skip my 93 and I'm gonna go to YG91. Now I'm gonna go up from the bottom of this to ensure that I don't get any of the red. Same here to ensure that I don't bleed out of the, that I don't bleed out, that I'm not dying. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fill in this light spot, pushing those shadows back to where they're supposed to be. Just like that. Just like that. There we go. Okay, when I'm doing live video, please rest the heck out of me. I deserve it. Why do you deserve it? Because <laughs> you're making fun of me? It's fine. I'm used to it. We're good. Okay, now we're going to do these ice skates. I'm just going to do traditional black ice skates. Um, yeah, isn't that fun? I'm going to do traditional black ice skates. So I'm going to pull, um, let's see, I'm going to pull my W's just because the ice, you know, ice around her is going to be cool and we're going to work with so many cool colors. I want the, the skates themselves to be warm. So I'm going to pull W9, W7. Ew, I know my W5 is tacky and my W3 is tacky. It's okay, we're gonna do it anyways. Maybe I won't, maybe I'll go with my evens. I don't know, I can't make a decision, so this is what's gonna happen. So I have W9. Kaylee Evans walking out to check the mail right now. And it's not here. So again, I'm gonna go around the back of the skate because it's opposite of the sun. I'm gonna do this little tab here for her to pull on her skates. Janice, I love that you think of all the little things, like even the little tab that is there to pull on her skates. I'm gonna do this stitching around here. And then the little tongue of her skate. Okay. I love me some details. You should do them green like the scarf. No, no, I should not. Thanks for the suggestion. But no soup for you. <laughs> You know I love you, Summer, right? <laughs> Tedious little parts, but they the more detail you add, you guys, the, the more reward there is. So take your time. Um, how many details gotta go to work? Have fun. You, ha, ha, ha. No soup for you. <laughs> I'm glad somebody here knows about the soup Nazi. <laughs> no soup to the back of the line. I love how he runs out of chicken noodle. Like who runs out of chicken noodle soup? Really?
It got all quiet. It is the best episode. W5, and I know my W5 is tacky, so. Oh, there's Kaylee. I see you out my window. <laughs> Are you watching while you're delivering? Crazy girl. Okay, so you know how the Copic markers are pressurized? So if my marker is empty and tacky, what I can do is I can put one cap back on to push all the ink down to the end that I want it to. I think that my brush nib is kind of um, it dirty. It needs cleaned. So I'm going to use my chisel nib very carefully here. Otherwise, I would not be using my chisel nib here. It's not a thing. <laughs> I just waved at Kaylee out the window as she drove by to deliver the mail. Okay. Shh. Don't tell stories. Oh, was it you, Sandy? <laughs> No, I don't step out of the traditional box. Um, this is W3, and I know that my brush nib on this one is tacky too. I need to clean them, but I haven't, so don't judge me. I need Sandy to come back and help me clean all my markers. <laughs> Stalker. <laughs> uh, Kaylee is literally parked in my front window. Like, hold on, watch this. Hold on, everybody. There's Kaylee. Hi. <laughs> uh, see, we have fun here. We do silly things. Now I'll never get my camera angle back, but that's all right. Okay. Now, um, her little laces... I'm going to make her laces red to make all of you guys happy, okay? So I'm just going to pull my R29, and she's going to have little red laces. There. You'll be there in February. I know, and we'll have to go through all my markers again and fill them up. Okay, so her little blades, I have this really cool pen that I got from a friend. It's a, a Uniball silver pen. And so I'm gonna use that to color in the blades. So they're metallic and awesome. Super fun. Yes, Sandy. Red laces, but not green boots. I did the red laces because you told me to do the green boots, so I was trying to step outside of the norm. Just for you. Okay, now we've left her eyes. Okay, so we're going to do eyes. What color of eyes would you guys like me to do? Um, so I'm going to pull out my multi-liner. Um, hey, Heather. This is 0.05. This is just Copic multi-liner. Um, I have the steadiest hands. <laughs> what color of eyes would you guys like to see? We can do blue. We can do green. We can do hazel. We can do purple. We can do whatever color you want. Hazel. Everybody good with Hazel? Blue, I need 
18. Purple. Yes, hazel. No. <laughs> Raya, what the hell? <laughs> oh my gosh, you're cracking me up. I'm going to use this one. I know I have a crazy bunch of colors here. And I need a uh, green green. I'm going to use, no, I want to use something more green. I'm going to use this. Okay. So. <laughs> so when choosing your markers for doing your hazel eyes, I'm still going to choose a five marker blend. But what I'm going to do is this is shadow. This is shadow. This is true color. These are highlights. Okay. So just FYI. Um, I'm still choosing shadow, shadow, mid-tone, highlight, highlight. Hey, pal, just in time to see the eyes. So this is what we're going to do with the eyes. So I have B99. I have E39. It was a rhetorical question. G94, Y18, and G triple zero. Also with my eyes, I use C2 and my colorless blender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my B99 and I'm gonna zoom in on this for you guys because this is obviously close up intricate work. Okay, so I'm gonna come out from the pupil and do tiny little brush strokes. Now, you guys will notice that Janice draws these really cool anime eyes. So I try to keep the anime in the eyes. Um, like this one, I try to keep the anime style there. So we're gonna see if we can do that. All the sparkles, do you see all the sparkles? All the sparkles. Oh, that's it, backtrack. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. So I'm going to just put these little striations in the eyes. This is also part of why I color no lines because if I go too far and I'm not able to keep that anime style in the eyes, then I don't have to um, because I can color right over those lines. Now eyes require lots of layers. Many, many layers so they're gonna look horrible at first um anime eyes hey carrie um they're gonna require lots of layers and they're gonna look horrible at first so don't get too paranoid that you've ruined them because you're gonna ruin them before you fix them so this is my e39 and i'm gonna come from the outside of the eye towards the inside with this color I promise you, you're going to look at this and you're going to be like, oh my God, she ruined this girl's eyes. My fat, fat, fat hand is probably in the way. And I just realized that I zoom in, that I zoomed in, so I'm not like in the camera. This is the first live you have sound on. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so yes, obviously it looks like I totally ruined her eyes, right? It's okay, it's a thing. So now I'm gonna take my G94. This is like a kind of a dark moss green. Hazel eyes have so many colors to them. So I'm gonna kind of trace the outside of her eye. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to do the anime eyes this time, but we'll see. Um, if you look in the mirror at your own eyes, they're darker at the outside and they're darker at the pupil. So I'm gonna add 
some little flecks of green and I'm also gonna outline her eye um, the iris okay and I know it looks like I've ruined her eyes we're gonna bring it back here in just a minute so Y18, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the pupil and kind of wash it out. Then since I have dark spot on my marker, I'm just gonna kind of color that off on the edge of my paper. Now here's where the real magic happens. This is G000, so this is a really, really, really light green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep going in a circular pattern and I'm gonna wash out all around this and push all of this dark to the outside. Okay, same thing over here. I'm gonna wash out all around this and push all of this dark to the outside. Now you notice we've gotten rid of a lot of the blue. So remember how I said these eyes take layers? I'm gonna come back in with some of the blue and I'm gonna add a little bit more blue in here. And then I've washed out some of the brown candy cane eyes. So I'm gonna add some of the brown back in. Not a ton, but just enough to add some of that color back. Okay. And then I'm gonna come back in with this G000 and smooth those out. And there you have hazel eyes. So let me zoom out a little bit on that. Not in, out. There you go. Okay, so now I always take my C2 and I add a little bit to the corners because this is what will make her eyes look round. Then I take my colorless blender and I soften that so it's not a line. Now, we're gonna make some magic happen. We're gonna go back to our multi-liner. And we're gonna line her eye. So I'm gonna come from the outside. Just like that. Yes, right, Sandy? <laughs> so true, so true. Okay, and then I'm going to add the little eyelashes in here. Zoom. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Okay. 
and add her little eyelashes. That explains it. I'm gonna go add some black to the corner here so it looks like it's her eyeliner. Same thing over here. Okay. Now, to make this true anime style, I'm gonna take my white jelly roll pin and I'm gonna add some highlights to her eyes. like that and there we have our little girl oh thanks Nona so this is um, the progressive freebie challenge you can be done with this right now but um, I think that later, after I rest my wrist for a little while, I'm going to maybe draw her into an ice rink or something like that. Um, I won't, it won't be super duper difficult to do because an ice rink, I wouldn't imagine, is too overtly difficult to do. So I'm just going to use my chisel nib here. And kind of ghost in where I want it. So you will see her placed into a little ice rink once I decide what I'm going to put around it. I don't know if I want her to be in an outdoor ice rink or an indoor ice rink or what's going to happen. But when I do little things like this, I feel like it needs to tell a story. So, um, yeah. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. If you are not a member of the Sweet Sentiment group, if you could totally go join, that would be awesome. Um, if you don't follow us on Instagram, that would be totally cool. Scrappers Delights. Um, is on Instagram as well as Sweet Sentiment. So um, that's where this will be posted. This, like I said, is for the progressive freebie challenge. So you can join the challenge um, by coloring this image and entering your finished project in the album. It has to be in the album itself, not just as a comment. You have to actually put it in the album, but that's super simple and um there's yeah i love doing the progressive freebies they're super fun i had never heard of it before janice but she opened my world to what progressive freebies are um yes i do classes thank you that's i know lena and i love this sound so if you go like this it's like the best sound ever <laughs> so awesome. Um, so yes, if you decide that you would like to take coloring classes or anything like that, um, I am your girl and I would be more than happy to have you as part of Sweet Sentiment. I'm just adding into the ice where her blade would have gone. Cause that's what happens at ice rinks, right? There we go. Um, hey Jasmine, happy late birthday. Your birthday was yesterday. So anyways, um, that's what I was doing with the white pen there. Anyways, here she is. 
all in all of her skating glory. So I will see you guys all very, very soon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Um, I'm going to go get more coffee and then I think I will finish coloring a scene on this girl. So, um, thank you guys so much for joining me for hanging out for like, um, two hours, right? Two hours. Holy crikeys. We've been coloring for a long time. Um, and I'm also going to put all of these markers away because look at all that. <laughs> That's a lot of markers. Um, so I will see you guys all very soon. And have a wonderful weekend. Toodles!